Now we find that rain, which brings forth fruit upon the earth, it's born, as the poet said, in the fields of thunder and a ragged, jagged sky. But if we didn't have the thunder and the ragged, jagged skies, the little distilled drop of rain that's been lifted from the seas and distilled from the salt, it would not be born. It takes that lightning, thunder, blast, ragged, rugged, fearful thing to bring forth the soft petal drops of water. It takes pain to bring forth birth. It takes dying. And as the clouds die, rain is born because rain is a part of that cloud. One has to see so the other one can exist. Uh, my brethren here, some of them was able. They could give you all the laws of those things. I can't. But now, let's drop over to another thing just for a little proof. I think one of the prettiest flowers, everybody has their own ideas of them, but I think the prettiest flower that I've nearly ever seen is back in the east are pond lily. How many ever seen a pond lily? Oh, there's just nothing like it to me. But did you notice what that pond lily had to be? I think of what Jesus said, consider the lily. How it toils and spins. But yet I say unto you that Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. For Solomon's glory and his arraignment was all artificial. But the lily in its beauty is life that's making it beautiful. Not some artificial uh, smear on, paint on, just like <laughs> our women. <laughs> I don't think you have to have all this green, you know, and eye winkers, you know, out like that and all that and manicure or, or not. I get that stuff mixed up all on your face to make you pretty. Pretty is as pretty does. If you add a little Acts 2 and 4. Mix it all up together, the little John 3, 16. It'll be anything that Max Factor ever did try to fix. <laughs> Your husband will love you more. Everybody else will, and I'm sure God will. Lily. He said, consider it. How it grows, toils, has to bring itself up. This little pond lily... Look where it come through, dirt, muck, mud, muddy waters, dirty waters. It pressed its way through all of that, this little germ of life, working itself from the bottom of the pond where the frogs and, and things are at. And then brings itself up through all of that, but when it gets in the presence of the sun, it's born. The little seed burst open into life. It cannot do that until it goes through all that process. It's got to come through that. That's what makes it. It's because that the sun itself is what's drawing it. And when it gets fully above all the dirty waters and muck and so forth, then it's so happy, it just gives its life out freely. And it's a beautiful life when it gets in the presence of that which is drawing it up. I think that's a beautiful type of Christian life. When something is drawing you out of the world until one day you're born right into its presence by the Holy Spirit. How beautiful. If you try to help it, you kill it. Like a little chicken when it's being born. You know, if you ever notice one of the little fellows right on top of his little beak or any bird that's born from an egg, it's, it's, got, it's maturing this old uh, egg shell. The old inner parts of the eggs has to, to rot away. And it has to take this little beak 
is scraped back and forth until it breaks the shell out. We call it pipping its way out down in Kentucky where I come from. <laughs> pipping its way out. They have never found a better way. <laughs> Why? It's God's provided way. Right. You try to help him, you'll kill him. Pick the shell off of him, he'll die. See, he's got to labor, strain, break forth. That's the way a Christian has to do. It ain't somebody just shaking your hand, taking you in. You got to lay there till you die, rot, and are born into the kingdom of God. It's God's provided way. You don't go in by book or shake hand, and join, pump up, pull down. You, you just simply uh, have to get away from the old shell. Notice, no better way have they ever found. They found no better way for a baby to get what it wants besides God's way for it. Now, when that little baby's born, you could um, set a bell down here beside his little crib. Say, my little son, I am a, a theologian in the way I've read books on how to raise a baby. And I tell you, you're a modern child. You've been born in a modern home by a modern parent. When you're hungry or need mother or I, just ring the little bell. <laughs> It'll never work. <laughs> the only way that it can get what it wants is to cry for it. That's God's way. And that's the way that we get what we want is cry for it. Cry out. Don't be ashamed. Say, I'm hungering for God. Amen. Don't care where the deacons, pastors, or whatever it is around. Scream out anyhow. The Joneses are sitting there. What difference does it make? <laughs> Cry out. That's the only way there is to get it. Until you get help. He taught that when he was here on earth, you know, about the unjust judge. A little dewdrop. I don't know the farmer there of it. Maybe there'd be a sign share, but I'm just going to say a way I think. It might be a some kind of a congested group of atmosphere come together in a dark night, and it falls to the earth. And when it does, it's born in the night. But in the morning, it's laying there cold and shivering on a little uh, blade of grass or hanging on your clothesline. But just let the sun shine out once. Did you notice how happy it gets? It just glistens and quivers. Why? It knows that it's that sunlight is going to draw it back to where it was at the beginning. And so is every man or woman that's born to the Spirit of God. There's something about it when light spreads over us that we're happy because we know we're going back to where we come from, from the bosom of God.